Hi, I'm Prof L and welcome to Chemistry Matters and today we're going to hit organic chemistry. And uh, there's going to be lots of follow-ups to this one. This is going to be the very, very fundamentals of organic chemistry. So if you're new to all of this, this is probably worth um, paying attention to. I'd say, oh, hey, they're all worth paying attention to, but this one in particular. And um, so let's learn all about carbon, I guess. Carbon is the fundamental element in organic chemistry. And the organic chemists would say probably that it's the only element of the 118 known ones to uh, be worrying about. Um, I might disagree with them on that, but we'd certainly be absolutely in agreement that carbon is a remarkable element because it can do stuff that other elements just cannot do. Okay. Let's go back to the very, very, very basics. Here we go. Here is carbon and of absolute importance in terms of carbon's chemistry is its electron configuration. 1s2, 2s2, 2p2. Okay. So the s electrons are core electrons. They're generally not involved in bonding, so we don't worry too much about those. It's these guys here that are the important ones that really determine the chemistry of carbon. And there's four of them. 2s2, 2p2. So four valence electrons, and so therefore four bonds. Now, yes, I'm simplifying things terribly, but that seems to work in the case of carbon. What we find is that carbon basically pretty much 99 gazillion times out of 100 gazillion forms four bonds, okay? And those four bonds can be any combinations of, let's say, uh, four single bonds, fair enough. Uh, you could have a carbon with two double bonds, for example, okay? Uh, you could have, what else? You could have a carbon with uh, a double bond and two singles. So that makes four. You could have carbon uh, with a triple bond and a single. Okay. Right, so those are the four possibilities that you've essentially got in terms of carbon forming four bonds. Okay, four sing So again, carbon can form single, double, and triple bonds. That's something I guess that we should have said first up, in fact, okay? So um, that's one important aspect of carbon, is that it is pretty much invariant in the fact that you count up the number of bonds around a carbon atom in pretty much any organic compound, it's gonna be one of these combinations and there are going to be four of them. So that makes life a lot easier, okay? Because uh, lots of the other elements can do a lot of things that carbon can't do in that respect. They can form more than four, they can form fewer than four, etc., 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 okay? But the big thing with carbon, the thing that carbon can do absolutely better than any other element on the periodic table is to catenate, okay? So catenation, what does that mean? Um, catenation is the ability of a particular type of atom to bond to another of the same type of atom, and so on, and so on, and so on. So what carbon can do that none of the other elements can do really is to catenate, is to form long, long chains of just carbons bonded to each other. It can also form rings of carbons bonded to it, just each other uh, of various sizes. And the only other element on the periodic table that even comes close to carbon in this respect is probably, dare I say it, probably boron, except that doesn't tend to form chains, it tends to form uh, rings and platonic solids and all of these sorts of fun things. But we're not going to worry about that today because we're talking carbon. Okay, so carbon forms four bonds. Carbon can bond to itself very, very easily. Okay, so those are two really important factors in the chemistry of carbon. I suppose we could say another one is that um, 
yes, carbon bonds to itself and can bond in big chains and stuff. Generally, what makes up the rest or the next most common atom in organic chemistry is hydrogen. And in fact, hydrogen might even be more common than carbon when you count them all up. Okay, So carbon and hydrogen, very important elements in uh, organic chemist, hence the name hydrocarbons. So species that are made up of hydrogen and carbon predominantly. Other important elements in organic chemistry, you've got your oxygens, you've got your nitrogens. To a much, much lesser extent, you've got sulfur, you've got phosphorus, you've got the occasional halogen, you've got your chlorines, your bromines, your iodines and your fluorines. And that's kind of about it, really, if we're going to be very, very honest. So organic chemistry is to do with very, very few elements on the periodic table. So let's start off with what some might call the simplest organic compound, and that is this guy here, and this is a thing called methane. Okay, that is a methane molecule, or at least it's a representation of a methane molecule, and a methane molecule has got the uh, chemical formula CH4. We call that methane. Depending on what part of the world you come from, you might call it methane. Okay. Um, so, a very simple molecule by the look of it. What have we got? We've got a central carbon atom. We have got four hydrogen atoms. Now, really importantly, these four hydrogen atoms are placed as far as possible apart from each other. And that gives them what we call a tetrahedral configuration or a tetrahedral geometry. So the overall molecule, the methane molecule is what we would call tetrahedral. All of the bond angles, hydrogen, carbon, hydrogen, they are all 109 and a half, give or take, degrees. Okay, and that's as far as apart, as far apart as you can get them in space. So they are repelling each other the least. Now, if you can remember back to uh, the videos on VSEPR and the videos on hybrid orbitals, you will already have known this. Okay, so the simplest organic molecule CH4. Uh, the next simplest would be a thing called C2H6. Some might argue this isn't the next simplest, but we're just going up in numbers of carbon. And this would be called ethane or ethane. And the next one, C3H, do you see a pattern here? So we're going one, two, three in carbons, we're going four, six, eight in hydrogens, and we would call that propane. Okay, and nothing particularly remarkable about those compounds, those particular compounds. So they are just simple hydrocarbons that contain one, two, and three carbon atoms. And when we look at the structures of these particular molecules, we see nothing untoward, really. Okay, they're all pretty much as expected. If we were going to draw them out, we would draw CH4 like that. We would draw C2H6 like that, and we would draw C3H8, whoops, like that, where all of these, we're saying, have got hydrogens on the end of them, okay? Um, now, when we go to the next one, C4H46810, we're going to call that butane. You'll know, well, you will learn where these names come from uh, in a subsequent video. But when we do that, right, so you can see this whole catenation thing happening here. What we're doing is we're making a chain of carbon atoms. We start at one, we've then got two, we've then got three, we've then got four carbon atoms, okay? And yes, we can make a chain of four carbon atoms. We can go one, two, three, four, like that there, and we put in all of those hydrogens, we put in 10 of them, and we say, yep, that's all good, except for the fact that we can make another molecule that has got the same formula, C4H10, but has got a different chemical structure. And that chemical structure involves a chain now of three carbon atoms, like so. Okay, so this has a chain of three carbon atoms with one carbon atom coming off that chain. 
If you count up those hydrogens, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten of them. C4H10, C4H10. Hmm. Same formula, different, uh, different compounds. Okay. So this one here, this one is called butane. This one here would have the name uh, two methyl propane. And again, we will talk to you about where these names come from in a subsequent video. So we're sort of thinking, oh, okay, so it's not quite so straightforward as it might seem. We're not just making a longer and longer and longer and longer chain of carbon atoms. Yes, we can do that, but when we start doing that, we find that there are different arrangements in which the carbon atoms can bond together that give you the same chemical formulae. Hmm, okay. So that's what um, the first few simple organic compounds look like. Now, you can see I've sort of rushed through drawing those for a particular reason that they take a wee while to draw. Let's draw butane properly. Here we go. See, right, so we've got a hydrogen there and a hydrogen there and a hydrogen and a hydrogen, etc, etc, etc. Feel free to go and listen to a CD or something while I'm doing this. There we go. Right, so C4H10. That took quite a while to draw out, didn't it? I know you millennials, notoriously short attention spans, okay? Um, so you're not going to really want to have to do that every time you're going to draw out an organic molecule. It's going to take you a while. So are there some shortcuts? Heck yes. Yes, there are. Of course there are. Now, this particular way that we have chosen to draw our carbon-containing molecules is what we would call a structural formula. Okay, so a structural formula tells you the way in which those carbon atoms are bonded together. It, it shows you the whole structure of the molecule. Essentially, there's, there's absolutely no ambiguity here when we draw these guys out in their full structural formula. Trouble is, it does take a while, okay? So is there any way that we could uh, do this more quickly? And the answer is yes, there is. Okay, so let's look at this and say, right, what do we got? This end carbon here, what's it got attached to it? It's got three hydrogens. Okay, so why don't we draw that end hydrogen, that that end carbon as CH3? And then let's go along the chain and say, right, this one has got two hydrogens attached, and it's also attached to those two carbons. So why don't we write that just as a CH2? And then this one here, again, has got two hydrogens attached, okay? And then this one here at the end has got three hydrogens attached like that, okay? And so now we've got a much quicker way of drawing things out, which essentially gives us the same information as this structural formula, and this is called a condensed structural formula. Whoops, formula. And yeah, as I say, it contains essentially the same information as this, but it's way, way easier to draw, okay? So that is butane, and as luck would have it, we have a little molecule of butane here. So here's a little model of what butane looks like, and carbon, 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 okay, like so. And you can see that that sort of forms a zigzag. That carbon chain forms a zigzag, like so. Um, so that's C4H10. If you count those hydrogens, there's 10 of them. What about that other arrangement of um, C4H10 that we had? How could we draw that more quickly? Okay, using this condensed structural formula idea. So that other molecule having the same uh, molecular formula, C, H, 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 and that is also C4H10, okay? 
One, two, three, four. Three, six, nine, ten hydrogens, okay? And we've got a model of that right here. So this now is C4H10, but it's a different molecule. You can see straight away that it's very, very different to butane. That this thing, 2-methylpropane, pro, two looks very, very different, okay? So can we um, represent that in our condensed structural formulae? Yes, we can, okay? So again, we could go along this carbon chain here. We say, right, this one on the end is a CH3. Now, here's where the fun starts. This one in the middle here has got an H and a CH3 on there. So we could say that you've got a C with an H and to show it's on the same one, you could put a CH3 in brackets to show that this carbon is attached to that one. And then on the end, you've got a CH3, okay? So that would be one um, condensed structural formula of 2-methylpropane. Another one, and this is a little bit cheeky, you could say HC. CH3, 3. And what that is saying is that this carbon has got one hydrogen attached and three methyl groups attached, which it does. This carbon here, one hydrogen, there's a CH3, there's a CH3, there's a CH3, all coming off the same one, so it looks like that. So, take home lesson here is that there's more than one way of drawing um, a condensed structural formula. Okay, so um, you don't have to, and especially when you're drawing big molecules, go and draw the whole thing out all the time with all of the carbons and all of the hydrogens, okay? This makes things a heck of a lot easier. And what we're going to find in the next video is, in fact, that there's an even easier way of representing organic molecules, okay? So I bet you can't wait for that. Um, so... If you're interested, tune into the next video and um, I will see you there.